Trump's backdoor power play to rein in the Fed. Just run the press's print money. That's what President Donald Trump supposedly instructed his former chief economic adviser Gary Cohn to do in response to the budget deficit. The quote appears in Bob Woodward's controversial book Fear, Trump in the White House. Trump disputes many of the anecdotes Woodward assembled. But regardless of whether the president used those exact words, they do reflect an easy money philosophy that he has expressed many times before. Trump likes low rates, loose money President Trump has described himself as a low interest rate person. This past summer, Trump launched a very public attack on the Federal Reserve's rate hiking campaign. He wants it to stop because it's making the dollar too strong and threatening to undercut his tax cut fiscal stimulus. There's only so much dollar strength the U.S. economy and U.S. debt and equity markets can take. President Trump is keenly aware of the risks. A Fed rate hike next week is a given at this point. The Trump vs. Fed feud will likely heat up again in December if the central bank raises its benchmark short-term rate at its scheduled policy meeting. Although a December hike is far from certain, Fed Chair Jay Powell and company seem intent on raising interest rates again and possibly a couple more times in 2019 if the markets don't melt down before then. Additional tightening will increasingly put the central bank on the wrong side of the president's Twitter feed. If Donald J. Trump wants to put more than social media pressure on Fed officials, he can threaten to remove them. Trump himself appointed Powell, a decision he now apparently regrets. It would be unprecedented for a president to fire a Fed chairman before his term is up, but not necessarily inconceivable. After all, President Trump has done a number of unprecedented things, as the anti-Trump media are wont to remind us. Does the White House have the legal authority to remove Fed board members? Apparently so. According to Section 10 of the Federal Reserve Act, each board member shall hold office for a term of 14 years from the expiration of the term of his predecessor, unless sooner removed for cause by the president. If the president finds cause, then he can remove Fed policymakers. Such a backdoor power play would set off a political firestorm if Trump actually did it. But if he merely implied that he's thinking about it, that might be enough to get some Fed officials to back down on another rate hike. Trump could strike back by auditing the Fed Another way Trump could strike back at the Fed is by reintroducing calls to audit the Federal Reserve's books, as often urged by former Congressman Ron Paul. Trump had made audit the Fed a part of his campaign platform in 2016. But since being sworn into office, he has neglected to push it. Fed Chair Jay Powell opposes an audit for obvious reasons. He opposes greater transparency to the public because that would threaten the Fed's independence. That's really just a code word for secrecy and having no accountability. In reality, the Fed has never operated independent of political and banking interests. It has just kept its activities and entanglements invisible to public scrutiny. The way the anti-Trump media portray it, Trump is breaking with long-standing tradition by trying to influence monetary policy decisions. In reality, he's just being more open and explicit about what is traditionally done through backroom deals. Many presidents have pressured the Fed Most presidents have exerted pressure on the Fed privately through various means. Lyndon Johnson reportedly went so far as to physically push Federal Reserve Chairman William McChesney Martin against a wall to try to intimidate him into backing off on interest rate increases. And Alan Greenspan notoriously entered into a gentleman's agreement on policy objectives with the Clinton administration to ensure he would get reappointed as Fed chairman. The only way to take politics out of monetary policy is to take away the power of a small handful of central planners at the Federal Reserve to determine interest rates. If the free market were left to determine borrowing costs, then no amount of lobbying by banks or strong arming by politicians would make a difference. For now, though, all eyes are on the Fed as the single most powerful economic decision-making body in the world. It remains under public pressure from the White House to loosen monetary policy. That will happen eventually, but it may come only come after the Fed goes one hike too far and triggers a financial crisis. Silver Eagle sales surge in September as U.S. Mint resumes supply. The sales of Silver Eagles surged in September as the U.S. Mint removed their temporary supply restriction. 
As the silver price continued to trend to new lows at the beginning of the month, several large purchases of silver eagles by the authorized dealers wiped out the inventory at the U.S. Mint. The U.S. Mint had cut back on its monthly supply due to the falling demand. However, now that the U.S. Mint has resumed sales of silver eagles, they have reached over 1.9 million, up 28% compared to August, and there are still 10 days remaining in the month. Silver Eagle sales so far in September are the highest all year, except for the usual spike in January when the authorized dealers are stocking up on the newly released coin. According to the figures released by the U.S. Mint, Silver Eagle sales fell to a low of only 380,000 in May. However, Sales started to pick up in July and have continued to increase each month. Interestingly, Silver Eagle sales in the two months of August and September are about the same for the previous five months. Total sales of Silver Eagles to date in 2018 are 11.2 million. The total cost to purchase these 11.2 million Silver Eagles at a $20, would equal $224 million. Now, I just used a round $20 figure, the actual cost is likely a bit less. However, I wanted to compare the Silver Eagle market to the increase in U.S. public debt since August 1st. In just the past seven weeks, the U.S. debt has increased by a stunning $235 billion. On August 1st, the U.S. debt was $21.26 trillion, and as of yesterday, it rose to nearly $21.5 trillion. So, how many silver eagles could be purchased with $235 billion? How about 11.7 billion silver eagles? LOL. That's a lot of silver eagles. The U.S. Mint has sold a total of 515 million silver eagles since it started the program in 1986. So, going by the 515 million ounce of silver eagles sold since 1986, how many years would it take the U.S. Mint to sell 11.7 billion of the official silver coin at the same rate? How about 750 years? Americans have no idea how completely insane the state of the financial system. It is built on an extreme level of leverage and debt. While leverage and debt can go up longer than most realize, it still has an expiration date. I believe when the markets finally roll over, and we experience another crash similar to 2008 to 2009, we are likely going to see demand for physical precious metals like we have never seen before.